Shalom, all praise to the Most High. Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shah. I'm gonna let the video play and then I'm gonna do a commentary on it. Why is it so controversial and why are they trying to pass this law now? Francine, that's correct. A lot of China watchers say that the timing is rather surprising for China to be so assertive on this point, but perhaps at a time when other leaders around the world are very distracted with the coronavirus pandemic and the seeming disarray in the U.S., this is a time for them to do so. This is highly contentious. The last time there was an attempt to push this bill was in 2003, which led to massive street protests in Hong Kong. So China says that this is ensuring the stability, prosperity of Hong Kong, but as we've heard from many pro-democracy lawmakers in Hong Kong. They see this as the end of Hong Kong as we know it. They see this as fundamentally eroding the independence, judicial autonomy, and other freedoms, including freedom of expression in Hong Kong. Selena, Hong Kong is 12... Okay, I'm not gonna play no more just due to a copyright situation. All right, I'm gonna get straight into the story. Okay, on the first day of China's biggest political event of the year, Xi Jinping sent the clear message to Donald Trump, we're going to do what we want to do in Hong Kong, and we're not scared of the consequences. See, this is Joel 3 and 10. Beat your plowshares and the swords and your pruning hooks and the spears. Let the weak say I'm strong. Remember, China used to be pretty much like a farmer nation. Now they like, they like a warring nation. Now they pretty much a superpower up there with the U.S. now, and now they're rivals. China confirmed on Friday that it would effectively bypass the seized legislature to implement national security laws. That's why they're protesting in Hong Kong, they're protesting in, um, I believe, Taiwan. Um, it's a lot of uh, dissidents among the um, citizens. It's just um, everything, like I said, is amping up have long been resisted by residents who fear they will erode freedoms of speech, assembly, and the press. The announcement, which came on the same day China refrained from setting an economic growth target for the first time in decades, triggered immediate calls for fresh protests and sent the MSCI Hong Kong Index to its worst law since 2008. See, any markets, they can't even stay up. All right, let me keep going. For Z, the move allows Beijing to reassert dominance over a piece of Chinese territory where its government was rendered impotent during sometimes violent protests last year. Facing rising unemployment in the mainland due to the COVID-19 outbreak. Yeah, and I heard they get ready to shut down, um, I think, a Shanghai or Wuhan again. Yeah, so they might be uh, quarantining another 100 million people. Someone can correct me on that. Facing rising unemployment in the mainland due to the COVID-19 outbreak and the potential for a big loss in Hong Kong, legislative elections set for September, the Communist Party decided it had more to gain by acting decisively to stem any potential threats. Z feels threatened. The leadership feels threatened. This is a crisis at Davis Way. An emeritus professor at the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology and director of Transnational China Consulting LTD. This is, we're not going to give an inch. We're going to tighten up. Shalaka and Hong Kong's national security as a potential subversive center is greater than its economic value. I mean, they're going to they gonna spend or do whatever they need to do to squash the Hong Kong um, freedom movement. So pretty much it's just going to be communist also. The move is triggering yet another round of tip tat escalation between the U.S. and China, which has seen ties spiral to their worst in decades since COVID-19 began spreading around the world. From supply chains and visas to cyberspace in Taiwan, the world's two largest economies are posed for confrontation. Did you hear that confrontation? On a number of fronts, as both Xi and Trump seek to win over domestic constituencies looking for someone to blame for deterioration in living standards. The unease within the party leadership was on display at the opening of the National People's Congress in Beijing, where Premier Li Kai Kuang announced China would abandon its decade long practice of setting up annual target for economic growth due to great uncertainty in the world economy. Rolling out only moderate stimulus, the government nevertheless 
made clear that stabilizing employment had become the top priority. Defense spending this year was set to grow at the slowest pace since 1991. We will strive to keep existing jobs secure, work actively to create new ones, and help unemployed people find work, Lee said. More than 130 million were out of work or furloughed in the first quarter. Wow. And um, I believe that's in China. 642 million people at work. And 26 million unemployed in official data. 105 million estimated people with disruption to their employment. <clears throat> The shifting away from a hard target for output growth breaks with decades of Communist Party planning habits and is an admission of the deep rupture that the disease has caused. Economists surveyed by Bloomberg see an expansion of just 1.8% this year, the worst performance since the 1970s. China sought to avoid reviving trade tensions with Trump, who has escalated his rhetoric against Beijing as its poll numbers have fallen in the wake of the pandemic. Lee noted that China will work with the U.S. to implement the Phase 1 agreement they reached in January. <sighs> Just before the virus sent the economy and potentially Trump's re-election prospects into a tailspin. The Chinese leadership does not want to be accused of walking away or reneging on the U.S.-China trade agreement, said James Green. Former State Department official is now a senior advisor for geopolitical consulting firm McLaren Associates. If it fails in their view, the U.S. will have to be the one to pull the trigger and walk away. Uh, okay, pulling triggers. The big question now is how Trump will respond. He has threatened for weeks to abandon from the trade deal and on Thursday said the U.S. will react very strongly if China pushed ahead with the national security legislation in Hong Kong. Yeah, and they're doing it. I mean, people in Hong Kong are protesting. You know, they, they like their democracy. They like the, their freedom that they got from the British. And now China, like, look, y'all got to give all that up. Any concrete U.S. action will likely be announced in an assessment of Hong Kong's autonomy. Secretary of State Michael Pompeo delayed a report early this month, seemingly in anticipation of China's latest move under the terms of the U.S. State Hong Kong Policy Act of 1992. The U.S. agreed to treat the former British colony as fully autonomous for trade and economic matters, even after China took control in 1997. A law passed last year allows the U.S. to either put sanctions on any Chinese officials deemed responsible for undermining the city's autonomy or to do something more sweeping like revoke its special trade status. Congress could also do something in between, such as prohibit Hong Kong from importing sensitive U.S. technology with consumer and military applications, which they already did, like carbon fiber used to make both golf clubs and missile components. No matter what, U.S. actions won't have much impact on how China governs Hong Kong, given the recent decisions in Beijing, according to Anthony Daparan, a lawyer based in the city and author of City on Fire, the fight for Hong Kong. Yeah, he said it is going to be on fire, a consumer fire, thus is the most high. If Hong Kong is not able to serve effectively as a safe haven, insulated from the political risk of doing business in the rest of China, there is no rationale for international businesses to be here, he said. They can either go direct to China or base themselves elsewhere in Asia. Trump's other options for hitting China aren't great. The economic downturn has made it less likely that Trump will pressure Z through tariffs, which can increase costs for American businesses and consumers. Instead, the U.S. has focused on reducing financial ties with China, taking action that could lead to delisting some Chinese companies from American stock exchanges and moving to restructure supply chains for essential goods. Okay, China has a $1.4 trillion plan to overtake U.S. in tech. See, they're going, they, they pretty much going after the U.S. 
You know, they dared Trump to hit hit back, you know, so they, they're going after the U.S. on all fronts. You know, China is also feeling heat from other countries. Disputes over its handling of the virus strained ties with Australia and the European Union, while poor countries who borrow large sums of infrastructure on disease Belt and Road Initiative are struggling to pay back the cash. But the biggest risk for Z is still unemployment at home. With lots of young people out of work on the mainland, the last thing the communists wants is a revival of violent Hong Kong protests. As we said, they feel at threat and risk, and therefore they're doing it. He said maybe five or six months ago they were feeling okay, but I think a lot of stuff comes crashing down. Yeah, see, right now is they're taking international national monetary blows at each other and. You know, pretty much um, it's just all talk, but this is all this great heat up. You know, thus says the most high. Like it says, China, U.S. tension, Beijing against new Cold War rhetoric. Yeah, right now they're just talking, but they get, they, they get ready to lock horns real soon. Amos 2 and 1, thus says the Lord. For three transgressions of Moab and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because he burned the bones of the king of Edom in Talam. Yeah, and that was back in the past when um, Moab had dug up one of the kings of Edom after they defeated um, Edom and burnt the bones. Now, this time the Lord going to sanction it again because uh, Moab and Russia, they're going to get together and they're going to get into that World War Three with the United States. I just did a video like a day or two ago about the U.S. retesting their nuclear weapons. You know, so like I said, the, 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 curtain, the curtains are closing on this age. You know, pretty soon the Amashiach is going to be here. You got the Mark of the Beast um, situation, the vaccines, um, nuclear weapons being retested. You know, the economy is collapsing. You got this plague out here. All praise to the most high. It's like everything is just like happening. You know, one thing at the another. So all praise to the most high. On to the next one, shallow one.